now the next chapter this is chapter 4 lines and angles now what do you mean by line if you take any in the space any two points let us call it as a this is one point this is another point the portion whatever i have drawn here from a to b we are calling it as a line suppose if i have extended like this in the extended line a b is a part of it therefore we are calling it as a segment but if i have confined to only between a and b only this i am calling it as a line but it should satisfy certain properties with respect to coordinate system that we are calling it as a slope anyhow that we are going to study in the further classes but still now first we have defined what do you mean by line line is a joining the two points with some definite properties is known as a line now the question is angle if the total space is divided into the four equal parts let us call it as the these four parts each part we are calling it as one quadrant let us call it as this is x axis origin y axis this is x dash now i have divided into the the total plane into the four equal parts now my main point is like this if this is an origin starting from o to x is called one dimension either it may be positive side or it may be negative side the same manner you have taken a perpendicular line that is line which is going to be perpendicular to this i have taken this is one more dimension therefore this is the extended positive side as well as negative side this o x y is called one space this we are calling it as a positive this we are taking it as a negative x axis is negative y axis is positive this i am taking it as a both are negative this i am taking it as a positive as well as a negative now my main interest is like this suppose i have taken a point p here this line which i am rotating by taking this point o in a anti clockwise direction generally clockwise direction will be like this but anti clockwise direction i am taking opposite to this so that i am able to get that implies by taking this i am drawing a line along with this line so that i am able to get an arch therefore let us call it as this point is a here i stopped here draw a perpendicular to here to here at the time initially this line op is called initial line initial line after certain rotation in a anti clockwise direction it moved the line moved to certain distance let us call it as alpha distance this is called smallest portion this line oa is called final line the amount of portion which i rotated keeping the initial line and then if i am able to find out if i am, I am able to identify what is my final line position with some rotation the angle the amount of portion whatever rotated that is known as angle in a simple terms which i can say that amount of rotation made by the initial line with the final line at the common end point is known as angle but there are certain things which we have to remember once again if you look into it the amount of rotation this is called amount of rotation made by the final line with the initial line at the common end point is known as angle but there are different types of angles are there the total space i have divided into the four parts now if we see different types of angles here what will happen we will understand now we will see the different types of angles 
suppose the total space I have divided into the four parts. This particular part which we are calling it as a common portion. This is called the point of intersection of the x axis as well as this is y axis. This, this is called common endpoint or is in O. Now I have taken like this one final line. This amount of portion which I have taken. If you see the angle between x o y is 90 degrees originally. That implies each portion is 90 degrees. <coughs> Therefore, the total four portions that is this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, totally 360 degrees. That implies at the origin, the total angle is 360 degrees. Since it is 90 degrees, which I have rotated a line, let us call it as P, taking OX as the initial axis. Therefore, the amount of portion it is rotated is alpha, which is going to be less than 90 degrees, which we are calling it as an acute angle. Now, suppose I have taken the OP is the line on the Y axis. Suppose I have taken like this. It made it as a 90 degrees. If alpha equal to 90 degrees, that is at the time, this angle will be alpha. Alpha equal to 90 degrees, we can call it as a right angle. The same manner, I extended this line. Suppose it went to the second quadrant, but our measurement is starting from here only then. Let us call it as this angle is alpha. It is more than 90 degrees, so that we are calling it as this is called P dash. Therefore, if the angle is more than 90 degrees, alpha is greater than 90 degrees, but it should be less than 180 degrees. This less than 180 degrees, then I can say that it is called an obtuse angle. Now, my question is, same manner, if I have taken this line P on this x axis, that implies I brought this line to here. At that time, this angle is going to look like this. Then if alpha equal to 180 degrees, then I can call it as straight angle. This I am calling it as a straight angle. Now my main point is like this. If it crosses more than this, then what is the stage of the angles is going to be? That implies we have seen that if alpha is less than 90, we are calling it as an acute angle. If alpha is 90 degrees, right angle. Alpha is more than 90, less than 180, which we are calling it as an obtuse angle. Alpha equal to 180 degrees, we are calling it as a straight angle. Now, if the line I have drawn here, I, brought, I got it as some angle here. Now, if you see this angle is going to be the same as this angle. Anyhow, therefore, we can say that this is the reflection of this one. Therefore, if it is more than 180 degrees, we are going to get a reflexive angles. Therefore, if alpha is greater than 180 degrees, the angles are reflexive angles.